four? Six save files is awfully generous given the era this was. Also, huh. I wonder how old that save file is. Greetings and salutations everyone. I'm Eku Mac. This is Let's Play he, Bugs Bunny and Taz Time Busters. I always say in Time Busters, but I'm pretty sure that's not actually the title of the game. Anyway, uh, matching box challenge. Let's check it out. We actually found a boss coin last episode, but we've still got plenty of mini games to check out. Oh, doody doody, what a surprise. Wanna take up the matching box challenge? Would you like to know the walls? Alright, Taz, you must push each block on this matching colored tile. Make the right color combination until you reach the last room and you'll receive a reward. This doesn't look that complicated, but um, let's give it the benefit of the doubt that they might do some actually interesting puzzles later on. Great, now the others. I have to wonder, like, I, I actually do sort of wonder, what would TRG be like doing this? Like, they'd probably do what they did for the Donkey Kong and Smash Brothers and LPs where they take turns swatching in and switching in and off, but I sort of want to see that interaction. Wonderful, now move on to the next room. Um, these... These pots, do they have anything in them? Probably not, but I have to smash them all because you know how it is, the one you don't look at is going to be the one that isn't take. See? They could have time gears in them. Can't take the risk. Now the thing I was saying was... The thing is that this is... This is entirely viable as a two-player game, definitely. I've played it myself with, a, with my sister. How we managed to get along that, for that long, I'm not sure. But the thing is that the camera isn't the best, but also I feel like this might have been the first of its kind, so we'll give it a free shot, where they have a perfectly functional camera that's just a little bit awkward for two players. As opposed to what they did later on when they went for two-player two adventures where they just had a completely fixed camera from the sky downwards and it was very poor gameplay, not very engaging at all. Which is what was Scooby-Doo in the Spooky Swamp or Scooby-Doo First Frights, both the, for the Wii. Like, the thing that I'm thinking here is, okay, but how would TRG be able to cooperate with camera controls? Like, they are slightly ill-tempered at times with the, the ripping of each other, shall we say? I should point out that if you're playing in two-player mode, then it, you actually use the L1 button to travel to whoever has the magic mirror, who. The magic mirror determines who controls the camera, and who the camera follows. Which is kind of important because uh, certain min certain uh, levels have puzzles that require one character to be off on their own. Aztec has one of them, I just don't entirely remember where. Cool. I want to say it's in the boss zone though. And I do want to draw attention even though we're two episodes away from it. I like that Daffy, that Bugs was able to immediately recognize Daffy. But it's like hey, Granny is listing off a screwy useless Daffy duck. Oh, you know him, do you? And also Granny figured out that I'm pretty sure it was unintentional, but she knew just the perfect way to make an offer that Bugs can't refuse by constantly flattering him. Like, how's he supposed to say no to that? Uh, you surprisingly can. When we beat the game, Granny will say, Well, yes, you've done an almost fantastic job, but 
not entirely. There is one. Th there are a few time gears that you haven't collected, and she kind of looks like it could rotate this cube spinner. Like, Bugs isn't getting to do anything in this game, is he? But yeah, basically it says, well, you could end your journey now, but there's still these things to do. Would you really want to... Oh, I slightly goofed. We don't want the yellow cube here yet. Because we have nowhere to stand so we can push the blue cube. My bad. I'm sort of curious what happens if you push the two too close together. But I'm not that curious. Like when the question when your question is can I soft lock the game? Do you really want the answer to that? Like we used to have lots of um hmm you know, maybe my thoughts on uh, licensed games aren't quite founded because you do still see some, you just don't see them to the same rate as you used to. Because just recently they released a LEGO Racers game, and I'm almost tempted enough to buy that, but the thing is I didn't get Crash Team Racing Remake, so... And it had... it turned out that was for a good reason shortly after it released, because, uh... Turns out there were some predatory practices in place to milk the player. Like, what the heck are you doing, people? I think Toys for Bob is responsible for it. And it looks a bit like LEGO Racers might be doing that, but I do remember enjoying LEGO Racers 2. I didn't get to play the original LEGO Racers. Or rather, I did, but it was a video rental and I didn't buy that one. But I did get LEGO Races 2 for myself, and I did enjoy that. I... done goofed again! You'd think I'd have learned my lesson the last time. This isn't too bad of a puzzle, it's just slightly tedious to get through. But yeah, it does look sort of promising, it's just that I was never really good at creating my own special cars in those games, to be fair. So I can't say I didn't have that much fun these days, what with all the work I already have to do. Great job, now move on to the next room to collect your award. We're not done yet. Oh! Oh wait, yes we are done yet, my bad. I misread the text. It took a while for people to really get used to having a left mouse button or right mouse, uh, left analog stick or right analog stick pressed down, and I'm not entirely sure whether it was worth it or not because 
It can be surprisingly and irritatingly easy to click it by accident on the left to analog stick, because that's what we're always using to move people about. Right... Right is a bit more forgiving if that's for camera control or the like. Anyway, um, give me select. We've still got a little bit to find in this region. But uh, we've always got roll the drums. We actually skipped over that challenge last time, so let's do it now. Come on, smart guy. Welcome. Wanna play the drums for 10 carats? Would you like to know the rules? You must repeat the drum sequence that I play. The buttons you need to press are shown at the top of the screen. Memorize them before you play. You have three chances to succeed. If you do, you'll get a reward. Yeah, if you're playing this too, watch this Taz. So if you're playing this two player, then it, you'd have, each would take turns, R1, L1, R1, triangle. Now watch this Taz. R1 square, circle, R1, X. One more, but this time you play together. Yeah, that's where it starts getting messy. Triangle square. Hey. I forget the last one. Oh. Let's start over, bugs. Oh man, he actually means it. We have to start over. But also, three chances. Not too bad. Square X circle. Uh... Darn it! That's my second try. And I just after I said that's not too bad. On the upside, we've got plenty of extra chances because we have plenty of carrots. R1 square circle R1 X R1 square circle R1 X This time you play together Square XX Square L1 R1 Square X X Square at the end Then L1 and R1 Congratulations you two are very good drums. Here is your reward. Want to play again for 10 carats? No. Ooh, that came down to the wire and I nearly got that last one wrong because I went, wait, uh, then I do, I go square, XX, then I do the L1, R1 combo, right? No, I needed to finish off with another square. Um, 389? So we're at 379, because 10 of them were in Granwich. I feel like there can't be that many time gems lying about. But then that was kind of a risk in the game, is that it's so easy to miss one of those minigame challenges and miss out on a bunch of... Uh, on a bunch of time gears. Also, keep in mind that this game does not have an equivalent of sparks. If you can't find something, then you don't have a cheat note to get it to in the 
to point you in the right direction. It's quite unfortunate. Oh wait, no, it's it's not giving us our total totals, it's telling us how many we have. Okay, we're actually finished here. To get that last 100, we need to find the two other Lost in Time characters. Well, three others, I guess. So, the Sacred Ride. Speaking of TRG, watching them play through Donkey Kong Country Returns is what kind of put this game on the radar for me. Welcome to the Sacred Ride, unwary travelers. Would you dare to test your skills? Ugh. Okay, so you don't get funny dialogue from saying no, you just get kicked out of the level. Lesson learned. I wonder what happens if I have Taz go up here? I don't know whether that was triggered by Taz moving or by me moving up too much over the stairs. So, would you dare to test your skills? Yes. How courageous of you! Ride the sacred dragon to the end of the path and you will be greatly rewarded. Use the directional buttons to control the... I clicked too soon. It's a good thing I remember how this goes. So, we have vehicle stages. One in each world. We can move about and hit square to breathe fire. Jump and press circle to... Jump and press circle to glide. But also there are still boxes for us to get. Which is highly unfortunate because we missed one. And we can press square to breathe fire. Now here's the thing. If you're playing in two player mode... Okay, you have to breathe fire to get that button. The unfortunate thing is that in two-player mode, control of the dragon is not split up evenly. We're gonna have to do this several times. Bugs controls the dragon. Come on, smart guy. Yeah, Bugs controls the dragon's movement. Uh oh. And he's also the one who takes damage. Whereas all Taz gets to do is press square to hit the dragon and make it breathe fire. That's not a fair division of control. So basically one player does all the work and all the other player does is break boxes. Or clear out the enemies, there's always that. And it just doesn't seem like a good way of integrating it two player control into the. Into of con integrating the second player into this vehicle. But on the flip side, there's the Donkey Kong Country version of this. Where both players control their vehicle, Rambi. And if one, if one player tries to go left and the other goes right, then Rambi goes nowhere. Also, you only get to use the Diddy Kong jetpack should Diddy Kong be riding on DK when DK starts riding on Rambi. It's just not fair, and I'm not really sure how you'd fix it. Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, we have to control the dragon for this part. Go and crash Bandicoot! Yeah. On the upside, these vehicle stages aren't... Um, well, you don't have to worry about Lost in Time characters in here. Come 
Congratulations, you proved yourself worthy. Would you like to try again? So yeah, this part is automatic. I don't get to control them going forward or backward, which is why I kept going past those acne boxes and not turning around to get them again. Those planks will fall. But anything you collected stays collected, which means that the damage could actually start adding up. Also, the design for the dragon is just kind of cute, but also... I... I missed the acne box again. I get the feeling we're going to be making this pass a lot of times. Smart guy. But yeah, this is this design for Dragon is actually taken from one of the Looney Tunes hey, episodes. Hello. Come on, smart guy. Um, Yosemite Sam. It's the episode about the singing sword where Bugs Bunny is a jester in the court of King Arthur. And Yosemite Sam is the fearsome black knight who stole the king's singing sword. And he has a fearsome black knight and none of the knights are stupid enough to go after the sword and risk getting attacked by a dragon. So the king sends the fool because that's what Bugs Bunny said. Only a fool would be foolish enough to go after the black knight's Oh, we actually missed the boss token last time because we ran straight past it. Come on, smart guy. But, but we we have to keep trying, so it's not as if missing it the first time meant anything. But yeah, so Bugs Bunny is sent off, and it turns out that the dragons caught a cold, and so it's constantly sneezing and breathing fire on Yosemite Sam, and he even has a line of. Dragons is so stupid. I don't know why I'm going for those carrots when I'm already maxed on carrots. But the way that Bugs Bunny defeats him, actually, is... The way I'm very upset that I missed that another time. The way Bugs Bunny defeats him is that he locks him in a tower full of explosives. Him and his dragon. No, 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 don't sneeze, you dumb dragon, or you'll blow us the moon. And then in the background, Bugs has already escaped. And you hear, achoo! And the tower actually takes off like a rocket in towards the sky. And Yosemite Sam is very unhappy. Well, the upside, this isn't auto running. So if it comes down to it, we, if we get enough of a head start on the lava, we could actually turn around and go back again. Now the last time gear that we keep getting and missing... ...is this one here. Ooh, that poor guy fell to his doom. And we get a... another try. We gotta do it one more. We have to go on the left. No more mistakes. But yeah, you can actually see um For a licensed game, they did actually take quite a bit of quite a few designs from the source here. 
I'm explaining Lost in Time, the first game in this time travel platformer collector phone for Looney Tunes characters, I guess. Uh, the three, the well, not the three, the time periods you had to deal with were um, the Stone Age, which was where Elmer Fudd was, the Pirate Era, which was where Yosemite Sam was, the 1960s. Okay, fast forward this part. Faster than going the rest of the way. But yeah, um, the 1960s had Rocky and Muggsy. The medieval area had um, Witch Hazel, I believe is her name. She was a, the boss of the medieval era, but you also had to worry about the king. You had to beware of witches and you had to beware of the king. And finally, you had the distant future. I don't remember the term that they used for it, but it was something X because everything in that world was X. But yeah, the distant future, and that was um, Marvin the Martian. But also, you also had Dappy Duck making appearances here and there. He showed up in the Stone Age for the typical rabbit season, duck season showdown. And despite um, Elmer Fudd being in the, this being in the Stone Age and uh, Elmer Fudd being a Stone Age hunter, for some reason he had uh, they used the normal design, probably for that specific boss fight. We're getting it this time. We're getting it this time. We are getting that. Yes, we're done. But yeah, and then Daffy Duck also showed up in the uh, medieval area here as Robin Hood, or Robin Hood Daffy, reference to that one Looney Tunes cartoon about him being Robin Hood Daffy. And uh, he was actually invincible. What he would do is he would attack Bugs Bunny and get him to drop golden carrots, which were a um, limited collectible, so it wasn't nice, but he would get his bugs to drop them, he'd steal them for himself, and then climb up the tree out of sight, waiting for another chance to sneak up behind you and hit you again. It was very cheeky of him, but fortunately you could get those golden carrots back by kicking him in the pants. I think he was limited to only stealing golden carrots he picked up in that level, thankfully. Because you needed those in order to unlock new levels, along with the clock symbols. So yeah, Daffy Duck went from being a minor antagonist to being kind of the cause of all our problems in this game. Go figure. Until next time guys, take care, I'll see you all around.